in today's lecture we will talk about the nmr spectroscopy and in our this lecture we will clear some major points that will be introduction of the nmr definition of the nmr the use of the nmr the principle the instrumentation working and the spectrum of the nmr spectroscopy so let's start from the very beginning nmr spectroscopy term N stands for nuclear, M stands for magnetic and R stands for resonance. And spectroscopy, you guys know it very well now because we are discussing this point since our very, very first lecture. So N, nuclear. Here in this spectroscopy, we will talk about the nucleus of an atom. Magnet, because we will use a magnet here. That's why it is called as nuclear magnetic and resonance. We will do something, somehow resonance of the nuclear and magnet. Now, what will be this resonance of? This resonance will be of the field lines. You know, a magnet is having field lines from north to south. Here is the interpretation of the field lines from the north to south in this diagrammatic understanding. So, what happens in sense of resonance? Now, you know, resonance, we have been studying this term uh, since our class 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th grades, okay? Where uh, the resonance was in sense of uh, energy and frequency. I'm talking about the, the physics. In the physics we were studying the resonance in that sense so our this resonance is matching somehow that sense of the physics so how will we do resonance of uh, the field lines here you know the magnet is having field lines from north to south and in our this spectroscopy our nucleus it will also behave like magnet and we will clear the concept of magnetism of our nucleus in our this particular portion okay so now for now you have to know that our nucleus is also having field lines so here is the field line one line of the nucleus so nuclear field line and magnetic field line we are actually going to do the resonance so now what do we mean by resonance here we will do the alignment we will align our nuclear field line with the magnetic field line suppose this was a direction perpendicular to the magnetic field line of this nuclear field line now we will just uh, align these field lines with our the field lines of the magnetic field line here now to south direction and now this is the alignment done somehow now this alignment is done by applying the electromagnetic radiation so when we are talking about the electromagnetic radiation we are actually talking about the spectroscopy so by mean of using the electromagnetic radiation we are aligning we are resonating you can say resonance for alignment okay we are resonating the nuclear field lines with the magnetic field lines so that's why this technique is called as nmr spectroscopy once again by mean of the emr we are resonating the nuclear field lines with the magnetic field lines due to which this technique is known as nmr spectroscopy that's simple okay i think it's clear enough right now now let's come towards the definition how will we define the same words but just a little bit modification how will we define the change in orientation of the spinning nuclei you know when a spinning nuclei changes its orientation its direction here we're talking about the field lines now here we're talking about the spin of the nucleus because our entire discussion is about the nucleus so what we're talking about in the definition the change in orientation of spinning nuclei in the external magnetic field by applying the electromagnetic radiation of specific range and that is radio frequency radiation so what do we mean by this definition we're actually taking our sample we're placing the sample in the magnetic field north south here is our magnet and magnetic field so we are just placing our sample in this magnetic field and by applying the radiation from the rfs source these uh, radio frequency radiation will then come and will then change the orientation of this spinning nucleus so this is actually called as spectroscopy nmr spectroscopy the same discussion is here the change in the orientation of the nuclei in the magnetic field by applying by applying the emr of specific range and that range is radio frequency range once again when we apply the radio frequency range on our specific sample the specific sample is having a spin and the spin will be changed due to this radiation and this is done actually in the presence of large magnets this is known as nmr spectroscopy according to this definition point of view that's it now the question rises what is this spectroscopy used for 
a very simple answer whenever we are going to find the molecular structure we will use this nmr spectroscopy and the next point principle which is very confusing for the students let me clear this point again for my students dear students remember one thing whenever you are going to write this principle of uh, uh, either spectroscopy or spectrometry just concentrate what is happening with your sample in your particular technique then write those things in your principle that will be your principle and if you are writing the things from the working and the definition that is up to you that is you are just confusing yourselves let's come to the principle of our this uh, technique so now in our this technique we are having the sample here in the sample holder okay the rfs means radio radio frequency source is uh, supplying the radio frequency radiation you can say the radiation in short on our sample the sample is absorbing the radiation and then it is resonating then our sample is resonating with what we discussed here our sample was going to resonate with the magnetic field lines so what is happening with our sample two things absorption and resonance these two things if you write in the principle this is your perfect and to the point understanding further again i'm saying if you want to confuse yourselves just write whatever you want from the definition and working in this principle anyway principle is the very basic the very first that is going to tell you people about all or the entire process the entire technique let's come to the next point instrumentation and working in the instrumentation we have instruments rfs radio frequency source here we have sample holder coiled and here are the magnets detector read out device which will give us a spectrum now let's come to the next point that is the working how this instruments work radio frequency source will provide a specific range of radiation for the particular uh, sample which is present in the solution form remember in solution form then what will happen when we apply the radio frequency radiation on this particular sample so before we move to for the further procedure let me clear people about the sample a little bit sample here you must remember that your sample must be nmr active now what do we mean by nmr active wait a simple if you take a nucleus you have proton and neutron in that if the number of proton is equal to the number of proton so you can say that it's having a kind of even numbers okay when uh, we have here two protons two neutrons will become four like this your nucleus will become even so this even nucleus even atom even nuclei will be known as nmr inactive so what we need is that we need a change either in the proton or in the neutron number so like this what will happen then our nucleus will become old suppose we have four proton three neutron now we need plus four and three it will become seven so like this you will get the sample old sample now this old sample will be your nmr active what nmr active and we need nmr active now what is the logic behind old and even nmr active nmr inactive when it is even means proton neutron are equal you know there is a clockwise spin and anti-clockwise spin so when you have even you will get clockwise anti-clockwise spin and these both spin will cancel each other and in sense of old there is no cancellation why because you have only one kind of spin and the spin is not available and we need a spinning nuclei for that sake we must have old nucleus which is having nmr active property and you got the concept of nmr active because it's having spinning spin is not cancelled here so now this spinning uh, uh, nuclei will just have a kind of magnetic behavior you know when a charged particle is in motion there will be a kind of production of the magnetic field and uh, this electric magnetic field production we have studied this in our low grades in physics well coming to the point again when charged particle is in motion it will generate a kind of magnetic field also so here our spinning nucleus will generate a kind of magnetic property and our nucleus will behave like a tiny magnet like a small magnet and we'll place this magnet in our this large magnet what will happen then in this large magnet will behave in three different distinct ways with our this particular small magnet either our sample will align by a you can say by alpha spin or it may be aligned by the beta spin or it may be aligned by this kind of inclined spin a b c we will get these three kind of spins now this is depending upon your sample now this consider this is your sample one two three four uh, this is actually methyl okay methyl ch2 and chlorine ch2 and ch3 now uh, just consider this portion from ch3 till cl okay in this ch3 we have i have written here shielded and this ch2 i have written mentioned here d shielded in front of the ch2 now this cl it is electronegative element okay this is having high electronegativity as compared to carbon ch2 so it will attract the electron cloud of these protons and due to which what will happen this 
particular CH2, including these protons, will become de-shielded because the electronic cloud is somehow shifted towards the chlorine. And you know, electronegativity is a local effect. And this CH3 will have its shield of electrons. Electron cloud will be available here. And due to which this will become this will be called as shielded and this will be called as de-shielded. Uh, we're talking about the protons. So shielded protons, de-shielded protons. And you guys uh, will know further that we have NMR of two types, HNMR and CNMR. So here we're talking about the hydrogens, protons. So now these protons are shielded and these are de-shielded. And now due to these two effects, shielding and de-shielding effects, okay, now shielded and de-shielded effects, our uh, these alignments will be seen. So because of the, now this de-shielded, when we place our this sample here, now these de-shielded protons will give alignment of this type, alpha spin. Why? Because of its no electronic cloud. When there is electronic cloud, then this magnetic field will affect in a very, uh, you can say, small manner. And uh, when there is a kind of shield available, now if you talk about this uh, proton, these protons, now they will give field lines of this type, inclined. Now what is the reason behind? The reason behind is you can, you can see that shielded means our these protons, they were shielded, they were having the electron cloud. Now due to the electron cloud, there will be no any kind of strong effect of this magnet, large magnet on our these particular shielded protons. And uh, that's it about uh, our sample. Now when will we have the beta spin? Actually, this beta spin is called as unstable spin. This spin will be obtained when we apply the radiation. And uh, remember, this A is called as alpha spin and this is stable spin because of what the reason behind is the alignment. If you see south and north on the same side, you can say if south and north is facing each other, then this is called a stable condition. Why? Because uh, whenever you have observed, you might have observed when you are doing the, some kind of practical or whenever you were playing with magnets and you might have observed that when you are reaching two same sides or same poles of the magnet, you are observing somehow a kind of force generated thereby. I mean, that is a kind of separating force that is not going to allow you or to click them together. So the same is the case here. Now here south and north they will attract and south south they will repel due to which this is known as stable alpha spin and this is known as beta unstable spin and this is also now in somehow stable unstable condition when we apply this rfs means from the source when we apply the radiation then this radiation will cause a kind of effect on these uh, lines and all of the field lines of our shielded and de-shielded they will start aligning as that of the our large magnet means the lines or the field lines of our nuclei will align with the field lines of our magnet. I discussed that here in our in the beginning of the lecture, if you remember. And now this alignment will be done due to the radiation. So when you involve radiation, it is called spectroscopy. And now here in this spectroscopy, radiation is used uh, for what? For aligning, for resonating the nuclear field lines with the magnetic field lines. Due to which this is called as spectroscopy of what type? NMR. In this you are using the radiation to resonate the nuclear field lines with the magnetic field lines. So due to which our this technique is known as NMR spectroscopy. And I told you this once again in order to clear the term NMR spectroscopy a little bit more. Well, coming to the point now. When we apply the radiation on our sample, the sample will become aligned. You can say the field lines of the nucleus will align with the field lines of the magnet. So you can say a resonance will be seen here. So this is called resonance. Okay, this point is called resonance. And uh, what will happen? Here we were having before alpha spin for our uh, some field lines and some field lines were having inclined spin somehow. And now due to our uh, radiation, this will also become in the beta state. These are available in the beta state and these will also become in the beta state. Now all the field lines will become in beta state and which is unstable state you know why is it unstable because same sides are facing each other south with the south you know south south repel and you know it is tendency that everything wants to go to the stable side or stable condition or stable state so for that sake what will happen then our these nuclei will emit radiation to become stable so what will happen then the emitted radiation will be detected by the detector will be forwarded to the rod and this readout device will give us a spectrum and this spectrum will be having a kind of peaks so which we will study regarding the spectrum point of view on the y axis we will be having the intensity on the x axis we will be having the frequency parts per million and now these peaks are actually studied uh, regarding three point of views the very one is on the basis of chemical shift the second is on the basis of integration third one is on the basis of splitting now chemical shift is for 
the upfield and the downfield purposes now what is upfield now these are the peaks that are produced in the beginning or first and downfield are the peaks that are produced later second to the upfield now upfield are the peaks observed of which kind or of what kind of protons these will be or of the kind of the shielded protons now what is the reason behind very simple here you see shielded protons were having a kind of inclined uh, alignment the field lines were somehow inclined in here the field lines were totally opposite and totally stable so when you are converting a full stable to an unstable you will need a lot of energy and we are converting a less stable to unstable so you need a little energy now due to which what will happen our this spectrum will be obtained first because we required less energy radiation to convert our these field lines to unstable and if you want to make this fully stable field lines unstable we will require much energy for that so due to which what will happen first we will get the spectrum for the for the shielded protons then we will get the spectrum for the de-shielded protons which were stable because they required much energy as compared to shielded protons so for the shielded we will get uh, upfield first for the de-shielded we will get the downfield next field lines and now you see some half peaks here these large large peaks are representing the number of protons and this is actually studied in the sense of integration we will integrate and sense of splitting that you observe here these splittings are actually uh, telling us the number of neighbor protons now neighbor protons are here now this is having carbon this carbon is having protons to this we have neighbor protons of this carbon so these small small splits are actually telling us the neighbor protons now using this knowledge we can easily extract structure of that particular molecule and that's the reason that we are using this for molecular structure identification this entire spectroscopy and if still you have any kind of question you are requested to drop your question in the comment box we'll come for the answers very soon thank you for watching and take your screenshots